Hello, and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinto, where I teach you how to start flipping and wholesaling houses. I hope this audio is working, because yesterday I recorded a whole video, and I got nothing from it. I think the audio bit rate is showing up, but who the hell knows? You know, I record. I hate when I record a video, I have to do it again. Oh, I think it's working. Okay, good. So, um... This is the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I'm Michael Pinter. I teach you how to st- where I teach you how to start flipping and wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So I've got a question today of how to check for clear title on a property. Now, here's the story. The real way to check it is to run a title report, right? So in New York, if you don't have a relationship with a title company, they're probably going to charge you if you don't end up closing with them. Now, I run a lot of title, so I have good relationships with, with title companies, and they don't charge me uh, to run it. But... The real answer is it depends on where you are. So it depends on what county and how easy your county is with online records. Now, again, this isn't going to give you everything, right? Because even the best counties, I don't know what the best counties because we probably don't have the best counties when it comes to this in New York, but even the counties that are good, like Nassau County, where you can see a lot of information online, you still don't know everything. Um, You don't know everything. So I'll give you an example. So I, I do a lot in Nassau County. Nassau County is a great county, right? And really with two websites, you can find out a tremendous amount of what's open. Oh, by the way, also PropStream is really good for this too. You can see a lot. You can't see everything, but you can see a lot with PropStream. So PropStream is the easiest solution. But in Nassau County, where you go to just mynassauproperty.com or lrv.nassaucountynewyork.gov, I think that's it, um, you get the section block and lot, and then you go to U.S. Land Records, and you do a section search for that section block and lot, and you will see everything that was recorded there I think since 1980. So, is it possible that there are liens that were before 1980? Sure, but it's, it's a long time. So, you'll see any deeds that were recorded. So, if it changed hands, you will see any mortgages that were recorded. So, anything that's owed, you will see any liens that are recorded. So, a tax lien or something like that. Those will all show up there. Um, so, that's really good. Suffolk County is a huge pain in the ass, right? Because you have to first go to the town get the 19-digit SCTN, the Suffolk County tax number, and then you have to go to the Suffolk County clerk's uh, uh, webpage and put it in. But the problem is it doesn't actually show you the, the document. It just shows you what the document is. So it'll say mortgage, but you won't to click and actually see the mortgage. you got to pay money. It's, it's a horrible system in Suffolk County. Now, you can go for free to any of these county sites and search on, on, uh, on, the, on, the, on their computers. You're just going to need, in Suffolk County, the 19-digit Suffolk County tax number, or in Nassau County, you can you give me the section block and lot. So that'll give you an idea. But if you don't know what you're looking for, chances are you're not going to know what the hell it is. Now, what are you what are you looking for? So first of all, prop stream, you can see who is the owner of record, unless it changed hands really recently. So that's important, right? Because sometimes I'll get a call and I think, hi, my name is Mike Smith. I'm selling this house on a look, and it's a completely different name. And sometimes I'll say, I say, are you the owner of record? And when I say that, or are you the owner? Then I'll get the truth. Well, I'm really looking for my cousin. Uh, well, I inherited it from my mother-in-law, that kind of thing. So it's good to get those things out there. And I don't want to be accusatory because sometimes I'm wrong, right? So, and sometimes prop is wrong. And sometimes, you know, something changed recently. So you just want to ask to see what the story is. But the idea is that if there are liens or messy stuff showing up, mortgages, liens on the property, the person calling you saying they want to sell may not be able to sell. I recently had a situation where somebody told me, hey, I have a mortgage, but there's a problem with it legally, so I think I can sell it without paying off the mortgage. I'm like, listen, I have a strong feeling my title company is not going to pay off the loan without paying, not going to give me a deed without paying off the mortgage. So again, in 49 other states, you can do a subject to deal, which means you buy a property subject to the existing liens. It's actually a great, great uh, tool in creative financing, right? Because you have people who just want to walk away and you can find a way to, to either to monetize it, usually by rental by renting it out, and then be cash flow positive where you're gonna get more in rent than you're paying for their for their um, current debt. It's almost impossible to do in New York really for two reasons. First of all, the title companies in New York do not run the transaction. They are simply service providers, order takers. They only have two jobs at every closing. One is to make sure all the taxes are paid, and two is to make sure all the liens are paid. So you come to a title company, you say, hey, we both agree, leave it in place. Most title companies are going to go, no freaking way, right? And you got to understand on subject two that you are doing something that's evading the language of the mortgage, right? There is a due on sale clause that says you have to pay it off when you sell. Now, I understand that Pace Morby is a great guy, and people who do subject twos are not bad people unless they deliberately don't make the payments, that... 
There are ways to avoid getting caught about the due-on-sale clause, but there's no real way to avoid the due-on-sale clause. Due-on-sale means you better pay us the mortgage when you sell the property. So you can, again, there are, are techniques to get around it. And if you're going to make payments, no one cares, right? As long as you're keeping current. In fact, many times the guy's late and you're going to get him get him current. So that in theory, the mortgage holder is even happier, but they not would not be happy if they knew it changed hands. So in, in New York... You got that problem with the title company, and they got a problem that almost every seller is represented by an attorney. Attorney is never going to allow his client to sell a property and have a mortgage that's still on his credit in somebody else's hands. I mean, if the guy stopped paying the mortgage for whatever reason, maybe he gets, dies of COVID, he gets hit by a bus, um, <clears throat> he'd probably be subject to malpractice if he, if he advised his client to do it. So almost impossible to do subject to. So, and, that's a, and in some ways, it's a beautiful thing in New York, right? Because I, I remember I went, when I first started, I went, I paid a lot of money to a guy to, to, who was buying 50 houses a month in Tampa. And the guy's name's Lee Carney, good guy. Um, but he was like, I have to run title every single time when I buy properties at auction because there might be open liens. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Because in New York, when we buy properties, it's always clean, right? When I used to buy properties at auction all the time. And it was always given to me. Any, any liens that were showing up there on the property were paid by the seller. I didn't have to think about it. And that's something that, for all I, I, I'm not sure how it works in every state, but New York may be the only state where you don't have to worry about that. But in states like Florida, when you buy something and the guy has a $2 million tax lien that you didn't notice, you're screwed, right? You can't sell that property. So you want to get clean title, right? In New York, it's easy to get clean title because the seller is really responsible to clean off title unless you agree to take it. Now, I recently bought a property after I just told you subject to wasn't possible where I paid off the mortgage, but there were other liens that I took subject to. Um, because I, I was, I'm was i selling the property to somebody else who's going to pay those off. but And the title company was okay with it as long as we paid off the, the mortgage, right? Because there's no due-on-sale clause on other liens. If it, but on a mortgage, there's a due-on-sale clause. That means when you sell the property, you got to pay it off. Again, in 49 states, there are plenty of investor-friendly title companies who will do this if both parties agree and will allow the mortgage to stay in place. That's fine. In New York, very, very difficult to do, almost impossible. In fact, I've seen situations where it happened, and I'm pretty sure that there was some criminal activity going on when that happened. Not important for this discussion. So you always want to get clear title. Now, how do you check? So again, I told you the easy, first way is check is check PropStream and see what's going on there for mortgages and liens, because it'll show you that for free. The second is um, looking in your county, right? So Nassau County is pretty easy to look with, uh, look for, but you, you have to know what to look for. Suffolk County, much harder, but you will see at least if there's a mortgage recorded recently or a deed recorded recently. Um, in other counties, it's, it's easy too. I've seen other counties where it's really easy. So short of that, you got to call a title company and say, hey, do a lien search for me. Some of them will charge you a few hundred bucks. If you don't have a relationship with them, they might. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. For me, from my perspective in New York, I don't care. All right, I'll run the title after I go to contract. If there's any issues that show up, it's a seller's responsibility. It's not my responsibility. The only way I can get out of a contract, right? There's no inspection contingencies in New York, but... The seller has is responsible to provide me clean title. So if he can't, right, because somebody filed a lien for $100,000 that he can't afford to pay off based on my purchase price, then he's not conveying clean title and we're good. And I'm fine with that. So uh, I get my deposit back and no harm, no foul, right? Um, but sometimes you want to know what's going on because sellers don't understand. Uh, oh, that lien, I have to pay that off? And then it becomes complicated. So... Again, I don't mind if it happens after contract. In other states, you probably want to run it before contract or maybe after contract because it's so easy to get out of contract in other states while it's impossible in New York. But again, you can get out of the contract if the seller cannot convey clean title, right? I had a six-figure deposit on a house in the Hamptons that I was going to flip, and uh, there was a scenic easement on it that the guy didn't disclose, and I got out of I got out of as, an as-is contract because he didn't disclose this easement. Um, and I got my whole deposit back. Thank God. I had to litigate. It was paying me ass. Cost me ten grand in litigation costs, but I got my whole deposit back. So, clean title, uh, clear title, same same thing. I uh, hope that was helpful. I hope if you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in finding out more about a course I have that teaches how to do what I do, go to howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com. If you are interested in finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching I offer, go to coaching howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any uh, channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help me. What else? Oh, please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I don't always know what to say. Any question you ask is fine. It doesn't even have to be about the video you're watching. And um, if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If, if there's an answer for your question. 
if it's something I've covered before, I'll send you links to the videos. I just sent somebody like four links to videos on a topic that I've done through the years. I think his question was like how to start, and I have a lot of videos on that. And if it's something new, I'll do a new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it.